What's up booktube, it's Leah Cooper and today I'm going to talk to you about the middle grade category of the booktube SFF awards for this year 2020. So this was one of the categories that I decided to read um, for voting purposes. There were four nominees. They were Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, Dead Voices by Catherine Arden, Sal and Gabby Break the Universe by Carlos Hernandez, and Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. I'm not entirely sure if I'm getting the correct title there, so I'll just pop up an image. I read three of the four books nominated in this category. There was a tie, that's why, between two books, that's why there's four nominees instead of the traditional three. I don't read Victoria Schwab as a rule because I've read a lot of her books and I don't like them, so I just saved myself the tassel. But I did read the other three nominees, and I was excited about all three of the nominees. One of them, Sound Gabby, I hadn't heard of at all. Another one, Dead Voices, I, is a sequel to a book I knew existed, but I didn't know that this book actually existed. And then Dragon Pearl was already on, like, I had already checked that out from the library to read on my own when it got nominated. So I thought it was a pretty good list. And now I just want to briefly talk about my thoughts about the middle grade category and, uh, tell you what book I'm going to be voting for and why. So what's the best way to go about this? I guess we'll talk about the book I think I found most disappointing, um, which was unfortunately Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee. So I'm a big fan of Yoon Ha Lee. I love uh, their adult series, The Machineries of Empire. And I was really excited for Dragon Pearl. It's a sci-fi book about a kitsune shifter and it combines a lot of science fiction, um, very space opera -y science fiction, military sci-fi with magic. Our protagonist disguises herself as uh, an older dead student in a military academy so that she can sneak on board a ship because she's trying to find out what happened to her uh, older brother who was in the space fleet and he's gone missing. And it's just her adventure trying to figure out what happened to him and also trying to recover a lost artifact that um, can terraform planets because she hopes that the artifact can be used to help her own planet, which had a botched terraforming job done to it. Um, ultimately, I only gave this like a three stars. I felt it was really lacking in character growth. Like there was a lot of room set up in the beginning of the book. There were lots of places for the character to grow, but she didn't really, um, not, not organically within the story. The story also featured a lot of kind of backtracking. Something would happen. The character would like elicit an escape of some prisoners and they'd flee a ship and then immediately be captured and immediately be sent back to where they were. There was a lot of kind of uh, repetitive stuff where actions would happen and then everything that had happened because of those actions were nullified and that's just something that really irritates me when it happens multiple times back to back in a story because it just feels like I'm spending a hundred pages doing nothing. <laughs> nothing that like has any real impact on the course of the story. And unfortunately, that was a central component of how the plot, especially in the middle, was structured. Um, and then, like I said, there just there was a lack of character growth. And in middle grade, especially, but, but really with all books, I do think you need to have some sort of character growth of some kind. It doesn't have to be positive. It can be negative. But in in middle grade, I think we generally want to see it be a positive growth, but there just wasn't any, so couldn't give it more than three stars. Sad face. So then the next book I want to touch on is Sal and Gabby Break the Universe. So I didn't know anything about this book going into it. I hadn't heard of it. It is also, I will say, also mention that Dragon Pearl and Sal and Gabby are both Rick Riordan Presents books, and... Uh, they're the uh, Sal and Gabby is the third now Rick Riordan Presents book I've tried to read. I also read Arusha and the End of Time last year and I really didn't go along with it either. I would will say I think Sal and Gabby has been the best book from that line that I've read but ultimately I still could only give it like a three stars. So character wise I wanted to give Sal and Gabby like a really solid four stars. I love Sal's character. Um, this is the third thing by Carlos Hernandez I've ever read. I've read two of his short stories that have appeared in um, anthologies that I've read and 
I think of his short stories I liked one and I didn't like the other but I, I don't remember them explicitly enough. I think I liked his short story in the mythic dream but I couldn't tell you what it was called. Anyway so I, I like his writing well enough and I really loved Sal as a character. I thought he was really interesting. He had a lot of stuff going on and he was a kind of representation we don't really get. He's Cuban American. He has type 1 diabetes. Uh, he also has a dead mom trope which is cliche but it is what it is um, especially in kids fiction I think and this world is deceptively science fiction it starts out seeming kind of contemporary with a fantastical element Sal can uh, make stuff materialize but as the story unfolds you actually begin to realize that this world that he lives in is really like Overwatch <laughs> but without the fighting the politics or the heroes uh it's it's got the same sort of sci-fi tech ai feel as overwatch um and i kind of wonder if it was influenced or inspired by overwatch just gonna put that out there uh so anyways um he he actually what he can do is he's not conjuring anything um but he's actually reaching across and plucking stuff out of um alternate realities and that's really kind of interesting and i think all of the stuff he's dealing with making new friends being a diabetic going to a new school um dealing with his dead mom and how that has impacted like how that connects interconnects with like his ability to reach across multiple universes is all really interesting the problem I had with this book is a personal thing. It wasn't my personal taste in that um, it's a slice of life story and it doesn't have too much plot. This book is almost 500 pages and I spent 80% of the book waiting for the plot to happen. Like I just, I kept re reading it and being like, I talking to my boyfriend about it, being like, I'm just, I'm just waiting to figure out what the main plot is because there isn't one. There's a lot of different threads. There's a lot of little plots going in a lot of different directions, but there's no main focus. And that's even more apparent when you get to the end, because like the climax of the book is a little left field. It does draw on several of these tiny plots, but it's not really built up as like the main focus it just suddenly becomes this big focus at the end and so that kind of style of story just doesn't work for me uh i liked this a little bit better than say becky chambers novels which do the same because like her novels have don't even have interior character conflict in them like at least Sal and gabby like they were both kind of struggling with stuff. Sal was kind of struggling with stuff a little bit. He did a little bit grow as a character. I don't I don't know if I can say Gabby grew much as a character. Maybe um, in how she interacted with him. But yeah, it was just it felt so at the end of the day, it felt so uh, shapeless and so directionless it was really hard for me to enjoy it i i would want i'd read a couple of pages and then i my mind would wander i would open youtube i would just start doing something else it was so hard to stay focused on the story it was so hard to get sucked into it because they're just i couldn't latch on to a specific thing that was drawing me to the end that there was nothing i wanted to know <laughs> about what was going on because no central question or conflict or plot was ever presented to me and that's just a big problem for me as a reader and it was such a long book on top of that that it was a bit like pulling teeth the second half of the book was actual a bit of a drudgery to read for me um about 50 pages away from the end I honestly wanted to DNF it um and I'm really sad because I liked Sal and I really wanted to like that book um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad book. Uh, it might be better for kids, though I, I know as a child, if I had read this book, I wouldn't have liked it either. I wouldn't have finished it. I probably wouldn't have gotten past page 50. Be, yeah, like just knowing myself, knowing the stuff I like to read, I would have been bored with it. 
so I don't know. I don't think Rick Riordan Presents titles are really my jam. Um, and that brings us to the third book I read for the middle grade category, and that was Dead Voices, which if you've seen my wrap up for last month, you know, I gave this a five stars. I read this in a single day. Admittedly, it's only like 220 pages. It's 235 pages. So it is shorter, which also contributes to uh, probably my enjoyment. But one of the big things I loved about this book is it had character growth. It had character conflict, like interior character conflicts, things that the characters themselves are struggling with. This is about three kids who have became friends after a traumatic event in the first book in this series. And they are going on a little ski vacation, but the ski lodge they go to is haunted by ghosts and uh, they have to survive the night. And so it's told from the two girls' perspectives, Ollie and Coco. And this is the first time we get Coco's perspective. Both of them are struggling with stuff. Both of them have to grow as characters uh, over the course of the story and also to survive what's happening to them. It's a little bit of a fantasy horror book and it's very quickly paced and there's a clear plot line through it on top of character developments and themes. And this was just such a fun, enjoyable book to read just spooky enough that me not a horror fan was spooked and I loved it I really love this series and I can't wait to continue reading it so this is my clear winner for the middle grade category I suspect that it won't be for everyone uh, but I can't help it I I, I was immediately sucked into this book and couldn't put it down it was so interesting and so much fun to read it's also dealing with themes of dead parents, absent parents, your fears, um, your limitations. So I, I think it's a really good book and book series to like give to a young reader who wants to read some horror. And I don't think this will be the winner. I kind of suspect Sal and Gabby or the Victoria Schwab will win just because Victoria Schwab is so overwhelmingly popular. And like, so that's why I think the Victoria Schwab could win just because she's so overwhelmingly popular. People, there's name recognition and people will just vote for her regardless of even whether they read the book. I also think Sal and Gabby has a really high chance of winning because the characters are good. The writing is good. And it's a really accessible story. It does have sci-fi elements, but they're, but like Overwatch, they're still rooted in our world. It's not as alien as say Dragon Pearl. Dragon Pearl is a military space opera type thing. And so I think that's gonna be a harder sell for people who aren't super big sci-fi readers, right? Whereas Sal and Gabby is a lot softer sci-fi in that it's contemporary. It kind of, del it kind of, eases you in by thinking it's fantasy at first, but then turning out to be a lot more hard sci-fi than it appears on the the tin. That sneeze for like 15 minutes, according to the camera timer. Um, and then also, so like, I think that there are a lot of readers who participate in the BookTube SFF Awards and just in BookTube in general who really like Slice of Life and aren't bothered by not having any sort of plot as evidenced by the Becky Chambers love that happens in this awards every single year, no matter how bad her books are, in my opinion. So I do think there's probably a predisposition to like that book. Um, and I don't know how many people in the community and specifically this voting awards community can are really behind horror. So my guess is that Sal and Gabby or the Victoria Schwab will win. But my vote is clearly for Dead Voices. So that is the first category I have completely finished reading for the BookTube F SFF Awards. I'm currently reading Sorcery of Thorns, which will be the last title in the Y category I need to read. Um, you can expect my wrap up and voting pick for the YA category to go up probably next week. Um, thanks so, so much for watching. I am having a lot of fun reading for this year's awards, um, despite all the craziness happening in the world. 
Um, but since I got laid off, I have a lot of time to get all these books read. So, you know, that's, that's the trade-off, I suppose. Um, thanks again for watching. If you um, are excited about the book two and my forwards and you want to be sure and see the rest of my category wrap-ups, be sure and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.